Welcome geometry students to a CUDA worksheet tutorial. Today we're doing properties of parallelograms. Now we're going to learn about some of these properties as we do these problems. So it's asking us to find the measurement indicated in each parallelogram. Okay, so one of the first properties we're going to find out based on number one, let's change the color here, is that opposite angles, okay, that means angles that don't share a side. So if you're looking here, this angle T has sides ST and QT, real cutie there, and it does not share either of those sides with R. R is kind of off by itself on the opposite side. So the easiest way to think is, okay, if I could travel across the parallelogram, that's the opposite angle. Now, one thing you're gonna see with parallelograms, one of its properties is that opposite angles are congruent, opposite angles. Okay, so we know that R is gonna equal 135, and it's as simple as that. Okay, second property, number two. These are not opposite angles. You see that they share a side, okay? So angle C shares CD with angle D. So how do these relate? Well, they're clearly not the same. C would be the same as E, but we know that because this is a parallelogram, okay? Parallelograms are shapes where the opposite sides are parallel to each other, thus parallelogram. We know that these two angles here, let's make this one yellow, and we'll make this one green, are supplementary to each other. So we know that angle C plus angle D needs to equal 180. So it's just a really simple equation after that. Let's use purple to solve it. So we have 70 plus angle D equals 180. You subtract 70 from both sides and you get angle D equals 110. So really simple there. You can almost do that in your head. You should be able to do that in your head. Um, so uh, yeah, there's just uh, consecutive angles. These are called consecutive angles because they're sharing a side. These are consecutive angles. So C and F are also consecutive angles because they're sharing a side. One after the other consecutive angles are supplementary. Consecutive angles, supplementary. So that's a, the second property, okay? And I'm pretty sure that's gonna be, okay, here's another one. So if it's, if we have a parallelogram, then we know that opposite sides are congruent. So that's the third property we're gonna talk about. So opposite sides congruent. So we know simply that 12.6 is the opposite side and it's gonna be congruent. All right, uh, let's see here. Next up, we have, um, this one's a little more challenging, another property going on. Let's change colors again. Let's go, let's go pink, or this magenta color. So number seven, we're, at, oh, we're asked to find RP given that RT equals 19.8. Okay, so one thing about parallelograms is that the diagonals bisect each other. Okay. That means that these measurements are equal, okay? So this measurement here and here. And that means the same for these two segments here that I just highlighted. So if that's 19.8, then this is also 19.8. And we can simply add the two because they bisect each other, okay? So that means those two components add together. So because we're trying to find uh, RP. RP is the total length Okay, so let me highlight that. RP is this total length there. So that will be equal to RP. So we get 39.6 equals R, oops, RP. And it's as simple as that. Okay, um, now another thing, this is kind of like the reverse. If we know that diagonals bisect each other, we know these are equal, these are equal. So if we're given KM, this whole distance here, is, uh, let's see, 23.4. Then we just simply have to divide that by two to find the mid-segment or half of that um, diagonal. So that's going to be YM. So YM is half that, okay? So that's gonna be half of, uh, of 23.4. So we do 23.4 divided by two, and that gives us 11.7 for YM. Okay. Um, 
8 and 10 are a little more challenging. Let's go ahead and introduce those and then probably move on within maybe one or two more problems after that. Um, they're very similar, so I'll go ahead and do, um, I guess I'll do number 8. So with number 8, we see that this is 60, okay? And the key is here, we need to apply some of our rules of parallelogram. So we see the big parallelogram here. Don't get caught up in the triangles. I know, sorry, I'll, I'll fix it. So here's our parallelogram. This will better. So we know this is 60 because that's the opposite angle. Opposite angle is are congruent. Okay, that's just something we can fill in. Um, another thing we know, just based on our rules of parallelograms, is we know that these two angles are equal. Okay. We also know that angle V plus angle W need to add up to 180. Because they need to add up to 180, we know that angle V is going to be equal to 120 degrees. Okay, so we know that angle V equals 120 degrees. We also know that this blue angle down here, what is that, angle X, is equal to 120 degrees. Why? Because they're opposite angles. So if that's 120 degrees and we're trying to find the question mark, the total length is 120. So we do 120 minus the 52 we already have, and that will be equal to our question mark. So we just do 120 minus 52, and that will give us 68. So this question mark is going to be equal to 68 degrees, 68 degrees. That's the best way to do this using the properties of parallelograms. You can also use transversals and the like, and that will be um, uh, also fairly easy. But that's how you do it using um, that method. Let me show you a quick another method for number 10. So here's our parallelogram. We don't really need to know this for this problem, but this is going to be 55. The other thing to keep in mind, because these are parallel, that makes this a transversal among two parallel sides. So if that's 62, this is 62 because of alternate interior angles. Now we have three measures in a triangle. We have 62, 55, and this would be the third measure because we know triangles have a sum of 180 degrees with their interior angles. So we can simply do 180 minus 62 minus 55, and that will give us our answer. So we can do 180 minus 55, I know I said it backwards, 62, and that is equal to 63. So we know the question mark is equal to 63. So two different ways to do this. This is using properties of parallelograms. This is using some other implied properties that you've already learned about. Let's go ahead and check out some of the other ones. It looks like there's a little bit more algebra involved, but it's the same process. So we're going to quickly go through this. We have 80 and 11x minus 10. We know that these two, because they're consecutive angles, need to add up to 180. So we do something like this. Add up those two angles, set them equal to 180. We do, uh, I'm going to combine these first. So I get 70 plus 11x equals 180. So I'm going to divide by, or sorry, subtract 70, not divide. After I subtract 70 from both sides, I get 11x equals 110. And I divide by 11, I'm going to get uh, 10. x equals 10. Uh, and it just asks to solve for x. If it asked for the angle, we, I mean, it would be actually a lot easier because we know this is 100 degrees. But if you plug in x in for, or excuse me, 10 in for x, you're going to get the same thing. Um, this one, these are two congruent sides because if these are parallelograms and they're congruent, so you do 2x plus 15 is equal to x plus 15. And we should get uh, minus x, minus x from both sides. We get x plus 15 equals 15. And we're going to get x equals 0. So x equals 0 for number 12. Uh, see if there's any tougher ones. Um, again, these are going to be supplementary. This one's very, very easy. We just say 7 is equal to x plus 1 because they're opposite sides, so x equals 6. Uh, the diagonals, this one might be a little bit more complicated. So we have UH, that's this guy, is equal to 19, and we're asked to find FH. So the total distance, it's actually not that bad. So what we have to do is we just have to, um, whoa, this is actually not as easy as it looks. So we have to double 2 times 19, double that diagonal, okay, because we need another one, another segment here, right here. And that's going to be equal to 5x minus 7. So then we say that, let's use purple, 38 is equal to 5x minus 7. 
And then we solve for x plus 7 plus 7. We get 45 equals 5x. And then we get x equals 9 after we divide both sides by 5. So we have x. Now this one, it says find the measurements indicated. Um, this one's tough to see what it's pointing at. Find measure of angle T, S, R. Okay. So what we need to do here is I'm guessing these are opposite. Oh, okay. I see. So we need to find, so these are the opposite angles. It's giving you a lot of information. I'm guessing that this is that angle and this is that angle. So we know that 125 is equal to 2x plus 14. We don't really need this 2x minus 7. So we're going to solve for x first. We subtract 14. Uh, 125 minus 14. That's going to give us 111. I'm thinking that's 2x plus 14 is angle r. And that equals uh, 111 equals 2x. And then we divide by 2. This is not going to be good news for us. We get 55.5. x equals 55.5. Angle T, S, R. Actually, what am I doing? This is way easier than that. You don't need, I mean, if that's what it's asking us to find, really all you need to do is say, okay, if this is 125, we know that T, S, R, this blue angle is supplementary to that. So we can just say that angle T, S, R is going to be 180 minus 125, and that's just 55. So, TSR is equal to 55 degrees. So I'm not sure what else it's asking you to find. Um, it's kind of a weird problem there, I'm going to be honest. I think someone messed it up. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the process here. Just make sure you plug in values when you're done. For example, TE, last one, promise, and VE, uh, EV, and TE. Okay, so we know that 4 plus 2 um, X equals 4 X minus 4 because diagonals are bisected. So I'm going to subtract 2x first. 2x minus 4 equals 4. I add 4, add 4, and I get 8 equals 2x. So x equals 4. That's not my answer. I need to plug this in to te. So I get 4 plus 2 times 4, and I get 12. So it should be 12 units for this guy. Make sure you include units. And that's really all there is to it. These other ones should be pretty, uh, pretty easy from there. Hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next time on West Explains Best.